Welcome back to the McGregor Angle. I'm Catherine McGregor, and the images of the Taliban triumphant and many Afghans desperately trying to flee their homeland opened the wounds of many in the veterans community, especially those who'd served in that conflict, although some of the Vietnam generation were also making comparisons with the alarming scenes as Saigon fell in 1975. It must have been even harder for the families of soldiers who did not return from that war. While the former Prime Minister John Howard, who initially committed the ADF to operations in Afghanistan, and the Governor-General David Hurley, himself a former Chief of the Defence Force, sought to reassure our veterans that their service was both honourable and not in vain, many of our servicemen expressed feelings of shock, dismay, and demoralisation. My next guest, Heston Russell, served as an officer in our elite special forces in Afghanistan. He has the distinction of being the only Australian officer since the Vietnam War to com command a combined arms team of tanks, infantry with air support in a ferocious battle with the Taliban. He served in that war, but like many veterans, struggled with finding meaning after coming home. His personal journey of survival of both enemy action and ultimate pers persecution by our own government is a testimony to his resilience. Now he's a passionate and respected advocate for veterans through his organisation, Veteran Support Force. He's committed his life to helping other veterans deal with the trauma of their service and the loss of meaning that comes to far too many when they separate from the extended ADF family. Heston Russell joins me now from Brisbane. Heston, good evening. Thanks for joining me. Hey, good evening, Catherine. Thank you for having me back on the show. My pleasure. How are you travelling and what are you hearing from your old colleagues and comrades in arms, mate? Yeah, I'm good, Catherine, and it's been very key for most people. Um, I think it's key for most people to realise that what's occurred this last week has been the grieving process uh, for, for so many. You know, we're literally going through those phases and stages of grieving because what's occurring is moral trauma. Moral trauma at the, the, the scenes on our TVs and the, the capitulation of uh, a country and a situation that so many have had so much of our um, identity ident attached to, you know, our initiation into combat, those deployments, mm. and those times that, like myself, found myself slipping into a bit of depression, remembering the very best part of me, the best version of me and the best team with me. Yeah. A large part of this realisation now as I'm in my acceptance phase has been realising that the fact that we're sitting here asking these questions of was it worth it and the media and the public are asking that is already the greatest strategic failing and that failing is that our government and our media did not take the Australian public along the journey of what has been our longest yeah. conflict. And as we sit here yeah. hearing people trying to justify, um, you know, why we were there and what we were doing, we haven't even segmented out the, the different deployments, as you know, you know, 2001 to 2002, when we inserted to destroy Al Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. And 2005 to 2014, what was the NATO contribution? And then we withdrew our combat forces. And 2014, and since, should have been those st stability operations to hand over. And a lot of that frustration comes from people like myself who weathered with the special forces community the last four and a half years of the Brereton inquiry, let alone the fumbled release and the devastation that caused to our community. People focusing mm. on 39 allegations as opposed to the 11,000 terrorists and insurgents that the Special Operations Task Group killed, let alone the more that they captured during our time from mm. 2001 to 2014. Let alone all the other statistics and, and successes that our mentoring and reconstruction task force did in building and capacity building, building schools, building those support resources. And instead, the Australian public is left to only focus on the, the bad results, to be here and facing the failures on the TV because they haven't been taken along with the successes. Mm. And Heston, we chatted once, you know, over a, over a reminiscent dinner. You were so proud of that particular action that I described in the introduction. In, in, it, it will be a, an action that should be studied at Duntroon and Staff College going into the future because other than Mike Jeffrey, you're the first person to do that sort of combined arms assault in complex terrain. And yet that was the subject of a day that really traumatised you. Take us through that and what impact it had on you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's important to note there was a couple of other officers on the ground, the other platoon commander and the company commander. Sure. But, um, yes, you know, that was that, was that um, 
three days out there in Helmand in Afghanistan where I lost uh, Corporal Scott Smith on the second day. And uh, I, give a, I give a speech often on Anzac Day talking about the witnessing the modern day manifestation of the Anzac spirit and those values that I fought for and my team fought for and we would happily die for those values that our country carries through and we as veterans bear the responsibility to carry forward from our ancestors who fought at Gallipoli. And I, I watched my team band together and fight through um, after we had lost Scott. I watched one of Scott's best friends fly in to reinforce us uh, during the, the rest of that combat the next couple of days. You know, it's stories like that that, you know, I get goosebumps talking here and now because that's where I know it was worth it because what I saw those guys do and uh, the inspiration that still draws to me when I go through some quiet days of my own, um, uh, I would go back in a heartbeat tomorrow. And the part that wasn't worth it for me is now seeing what all the families are going through, asking, questioning, was it worth it? And that's where I ask all these veterans to just remember that we did our job. Carry your heads high. And when we were there on the ground, Afghanistan was a, a better place. And uh, we did our job. And now those veterans, like our Vietnam veterans before us, who are no longer serving, it's our job to serve again, to make sure that our government and our Australian people don't forget that we are better than this. Regardless who steps up and saying, our, regardless of our best efforts, these are not our best efforts. There have been failings in this system uh, that we need to go back and make sure accountability is held and accountability is cast. And, you know, me and Catherine, I'll be working with you and many others, setting estimates and everything else in between to make sure that we pick apart all the lessons learned from here. I bet the Australian government wished that it withdrew at the end of the NATO um, operation at the end of 2014. And we can't change that. But like myself and so many other veterans, in order to help us push forward and look forward, we need to look at the practical and pragmatic um, systems and processes we can go through right here and right now. And even just before getting on um, this show with you today, I'm being contacted by people in Kabul whose families worked for the Department of Foreign Affairs and they don't know where to reach out to and they're messaging me on Instagram. You know, we need the government to actively engage with everyone in veteran community at home when they stand up and do their press conferences to tell people, Australian permanent residencies and those with visas, who they can, where they can go to, to to contact and step up that force. We're sitting here churching about, you know, going into the belly of the beast to extract those Australians and those who supported us in Kabul. And indeed, I take my hat off to the servicemen and women who are deployed, but it's not going to be an in-out, on-guard operation. We need to re-establish a diplomatic presence. We need to enact our business continuity plan for the Kabul embassy and position it there at the airport of entry to provide support mm. to the refugees that are going to come. We need to tie in with the local Afghanistan populations. There's a large one right here in Queensland to help and support them because so many of them have their families there. And we need to, to open up our refugee status, just like we did post the end of Syria, where we accepted 12,000 additional refugees because some of the best people that I have worked in and around in Sydney and in Brisbane, when all the burden report and everything else first came out, I had local Afghan Australians walking up to me and saying, I am so sorry that you and your people are going through this. I am so sorry that veterans are experiencing mental health issues because you went to my country to fight for the freedom. That is the most amazing thing I've experienced here in Australia. We need to refocus the priorities of our Australian people and of our government to do what needs to be done right here and right now. And we need to reassure the Australian public and the veteran community that we are going to learn from this. Because like you said, Catherine, and all the Vietnam veterans I've spoken to this week, we have done this again and we can't change that but bloody hell, we're not going to let it happen again. Well, well said, Heston. That's a terrific note to go out on, and I commend to the audience your terrific, heartfelt piece that was in News Limited newspapers this week reflecting on your service. Heston, thank you. I'll, I'll talk to you again offline and we'll speak again on this program. Heston Russell, I salute you. Thank you for Great. your service. Thank you, Catherine.